John Bailey on grinding slots or edge grinding if you want to call it that. But there's a couple of ways to do it and uh, I like side wheeling frankly but it has its challenges and I'll show you what I mean by that. In this case we've selected a 60 J wheel. That's a 60 grit and a J hardness. We prefer a harder wheel for side wheeling because it doesn't break down quite as quickly as say an H or an I does. So we're going to come in here with a surface grinder and we're going to relieve these edges right in here. We're going to come to a point on both sides. And then we're going to come in here with our surface grinder and we're going to grind back and forth like so and then move over here and go back and forth this way and to a specific size. So we're going to actually grind this to a specific uh, uh, tolerance maybe within half a thousandths or a thousand somewhere in there. There's another way to do it though rather than side wheel and that is to put it up on a sign plate at say a 45 degree angle and then dressing the wheel at a 45 degree angle and by doing it that way you don't side wheel it's easier it's faster and believe it or not it can even be more accurate and why do I say that? Because when you're feeding down, because it's a sign of the angle, it's only 70% of what you're feeding down. So if you're going to feed down 10 thousandths, you're really only feeding down 7, not 10. Likewise to 1 thousandths, 7 tenths. The disadvantage of that is that when you rotate your part and you move it 180 degrees, you have to be very careful that it's the edges are clean, that your sides are parallel in the first place, and that you put it down in what we call register it in such a way that you don't have it cocked one way or another because if you do then you're going to put a taper in here or a bell mouth or you know it's going to cause a problem in any case. So those are the two ways to grind a slot and we'll take you out back and we'll show you what we mean by that but before we do I want to take you to the whiteboard and I want to show you what the, the, what the wheel looks like after we dress it. So let's take a look up at the whiteboard. All right, so here's our wheel. This is our grinding wheel. And we're going to focus on relieving this area like so. So we want to take a look at this area. So let's blow that up a little bit. We're going to come down here and we're going to show this like so. That's exaggerated, but that's our grinding wheel. So we've, we've relieved this area in here. So now let's take a good look at this area. That area is even bigger, like so. And this is where the cutting edge is, right here. What happens when this breaks down, like so, and we lose that, now we have a problem. Because when we're in our slot, and we're trying to grind our slot which is going to look something like that we could end up with that sort of a configuration and that's a problem so the point on this wheel is very very important and we, and we have an undercut in here remember that we have an undercut so the point will go down into into the undercut I'll show you back over here like so. So as long as the point is down in the undercut we're good but when the point breaks off like so we're not in the undercut anymore then exaggerated this part is going to look like that. It's not going to look like this. It's going to have a, a curve in it and we don't want that. We want it to be flat. So in order for it to be flat, the point has to remain sharp. So that's why we chose a J wheel, because we, we need that wheel to hold up and not break down. So, so the point doesn't break down. That's the whole idea of it. That's why we have a J wheel. So let's go up back and let's take a look at it. Okay, so uh, as we mentioned, there's two ways to grind the slot. One way is to uh, side wheel it, and the other way is to grind it on a 45 degree angle, which is what we're going to do here. Now this wheel has already been prepared, so it already has its 45 degree angle on it, but because we have remounted the wheel, we need to redress it. 
So we're going to take our tangent dresser and we'll come in here, get it on the center line. And we'll gently come in and touch it. You can hear it's kind of running out a little bit. And you can hear it zinging, so you can tell it's a harder wheel than we normally dress with, or we grind with, rather. I like that. Okay, we're good to go. So we'll remove the dresser, and we're going to put the sign plate on. All right, so we put our sign plate on the chuck. We've had to shim it out with some parallels. You want to make sure that the back rail has been registered, that is, that it's been ground parallel to the ways, which in this case it has been. Stone everything, stone the chuck, stone the, this chuck, stone that chuck, stone the part that we have on there that we're going to grind. These are tight quarters, but we got enough clearance to make it work. So. Remember, when you're grinding on a 45 degree angle, when you feed down the thousands, it's not really a thousandth, it's only seven tenths, because it's a sign of the angle. And we're grinding on a 45 degree angle. So basically, the chuck is on a 45 degree angle, and our wheel's on a 45 degree angle, so that cancels it out, that makes it parallel with what we're gonna grind. And we'll show you how that works. So we'll turn our wheel on, I know that the chucks are on now, everybody is secured, so we're ready to roll. So we'll come down carefully. We're going to clean it up, that's all we need to do. Now keep in mind, we're not concerned about size at this point. Size is not something we're going to concern ourselves with. We would have to hold the size, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to show you how it's done, not that we're going to hold size. So that side's cleaned up. To be safe, we'll turn our chuck off, our grinding wheel off, rather. I'm going to turn the chuck off and turn the part around. All right, can you see that, Glenn? Got a nice clean part there. Again, these sides have to be parallel with each other, because if they're not, we turn around, we're going to grind the taper in here. So we don't want that. Clean it off, slide it on. I'm going to bring it up again because I don't know that this side is the same as the other. Just to be safe. Take a look at it. Cleaned up. Again, we're not holding size here. All we're doing is showing you the concept of how you can grind a slot without having the side wheel it. And this is one way to do it. Now we're going to change our setup. We're actually going to do some side wheeling, so stay tuned. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve out a portion of the wheel, relieve it a little bit so we get a point at the bottom. I'm relieving it so it won't be touching the side of the part that we're going to be side wheeling. All I want to touch is the point of the wheel, right down here at the very bottom. I have to do that on the back side as well.
You gotta be careful with your fingers. And we talked about that. If you got 10 of them, it's a good idea to keep them. While I'm at it, I'm gonna to touch this back rail. Darn good. I'm happy. Now we'll stone the chuck again just to make sure. You'll notice when we ground the first part, I positioned everything to one side. And the reason I did that is so I have room to get away from the wheel so I can inspect the part. I didn't put it in the center, I put it to one side. I'm going to do the same thing here. Besides, it doesn't wear the ways of the machine out in the center. to bring it down all the way I just have to bring it down so it clears the undercut which is right about there and we'll bring it in carefully chucks on want to make sure don't need to throw the part Side wheeling. Now one of the things you're going to want to do is make sure that your wheel is relieved right. So the point of the wheel is actually doing the grinding. And I can tell the way it's sparking that that is not the case. I want to relieve that just a little bit more. And we'll give that another try. I like that. Let it spark out. All right, we'll do the other side now. I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Close enough. Now depending whether I had to hold size or not as to when I would stop and check it also depends if I had to control the thickness on one side or another and at the same time hold size then I'd have to check the inside and let's say I had to take off ten thousandths and I had to take it off evenly but one side only had two thousandths on it and the other side had eight obviously I'm going to take off eight on one side and two on the other. So. In this case, we're just giving you a demonstration of how to side wheel, not necessarily how to hold size. So we'll take the part, turn off our spindle, turn off the chuck. Take a look, see at what we've got. You get a good shot of that, Glenn? Yes, sir. You'll see the crisscross pattern in there. It's kind of hard to see, but 
there is a crisscross pattern. Again, we use the 60 J wheel, which is kind of hard, but that's the kind of wheel that you need to make sure that the point down here stays sharp. You know what we'll do? We'll take a, I'm going to take the wheel off. We'll take a good close up look at the wheel so we can get an idea of what I was talking about. So stand by. All right, can we get a close up here? I don't know which is better, up here, depending on the, depending on the light. But you can kind of see how I've dished it out and brought it to a point on both sides. So that's how we side wheel. That's how we uh, can grind a slot by using a 60J wheel and uh, we think that this is the type of wheel to use because of the degree of hardness. You get it too hard now, it won't break down. You get it too soft and it'll break down too much. So uh, depending on the application, the type of steel, but this is the kind of wheel that we chose for this particular job. So again, thanks for watching.